As you know, I was raised macrobiotically. Uh, my parents, Michio and Evelyn, are the leaders of the international macrobiotic movement. Um, and uh, the work that I do professionally, I see very much complements the work that they have been doing in terms of trying to raise awareness about the importance of food in all aspects of life. Um, the, the work that I do is, as I mentioned, epidemiology. Epidemiology is a science in which one looks at the relationships between not necessarily just diet, but different aspects of lifestyle, medical history, uh, other things, and how that relates to patterns of disease. And so understanding those relationships and then trying to develop programs to help prevent you know, heart disease or cancer or other things like that. And so I came to this field basically because I was interested in trying to do something that was related to creating a better world, so to speak. Uh, uh, but I wasn't so much interested in sort of directly uh, working as a physician and perhaps prescribing medications that I felt uncomfortable with or involved in surgery or, you know, some of these actions uh, that I, I personally feel uncomfortable about. Um, and I discovered the field of epidemiology, basically, when I was in graduate school. I was studying nutrition as a science, um, and many of the people I was studying with were doing laboratory studies, working with animals, uh, that kind of thing, which I also was not very attracted to. But intellectually, I was interested in understanding biochemical pathways. Uh, but I discovered epidemiology as a way of understanding patterns of disease occurrence in human populations, so we can study people in their natural environment uh, according to the decisions they've made in terms of what they would like to do, uh, and not having to create artificial situations, manipulate you know animals, or you know sacrifice them. And it turns out that uh, epidemiology itself is a relatively young field. Um, only a few decades old, and nutrition as it's used, questions of nutrition in epidemiology is also relatively young. Uh, it's really only in the past 20 years that there's really been an explosion of interest in these types of studies. And so I managed to become involved just as interest was just starting to pick up, and now there are several programs that teach uh, people in nutritional epidemiology. Um, now, the interesting thing to me is that as we, as studies are done looking at, for example, the relationship between what people eat, say their, uh, their fiber intake or their fat intake or something like that, and how that's related to whether they develop cancer or heart disease. Uh, and now there are many, many studies that have been published uh, on these and related topics. And when we look at them all, then we see that all this information points towards a more healthful, health-promoting diet is one which is based on whole grains, minimally processed uh, uh, foods, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, um, beans as a staple part of the diet, really minimizing the amount of animal food, particularly red meat, you know, very, very little. There's really no evidence that eating red meat is really essential or or that it's you know in fact the more that you eat the greater your chances of getting heart disease colon cancer pancreatic cancer a wide variety of illnesses and these studies are demonstrating this the people conducting them aren't necessarily aware of macrobiotics or even vegetarian lifestyles or anything like that and yet their studies are pointing in this direction and so there's an evolution in awareness, basically, a revolution almost, uh, saying that, yes, dietary patterns do make a difference, and a macrobiotic type dietary pattern is really probably the most beneficial for preventing these, these diseases. Yeah, well, as, as far as macrobiotics and its philosophy and sort of as a movement, you know, and the role that it can play now or maybe should play or whatever, I guess I have I'm of two different minds, you know. One is that, on one level, I feel like it's not necessarily so important to know about macrobiotics per se or to understand the philosophy or whatever. Um, but I think that a lot of the awareness of 
interrelationships among lifestyle, diet, disease patterns, sort of health of the planet, not just of your own body, uh, uh, social relationships, ecologic uh, impact. A lot of those sensibilities that macrobiotics has uh, can be applied, I think, in, in almost any arena. But whether you call it macrobiotics or it comes from some other source, it's, in a sense, not so important. Uh, so, so on that level, I'm not so sure. But on the other hand, you know, when I look over my lifetime and seen directly contributions that my parents and people who have worked, studied with my parents or their colleagues have done, I mean, mac the macrobiotic movement has played such an integral role, uh, often invisible to the general public, so to speak, in making a macrobiotic type lifestyle possible. Uh, things like established, basically every major natural food company in the United States, in Europe, in Australia, they were all started by students of macrobiotics or influenced by macrobiotics. Uh, and so simply the availability of organically grown grains and beans, uh, you know, sort of uh, that type of thing, or uh, some traditional foodstuffs like tofu or tempeh or some of these things becoming widely available. Um, or see vegetables, you know, available in most natural food stores and many mainstream grocery stores. Uh, those things all started because people in the macrobiotic community. And so, so I see that uh, the contribution of macrobiotics as a movement or as individuals who know about macrobiotics and have studied macrobiotics directly in terms of making these changes possible you know, is I mean, it's been central to all that. So interest in macrobiotics from the biomedical community has been sort of a, I guess what I'd call a love-hate relationship almost. <laughs> There's been one perspective which basically has thought of macrobiotics as this extreme diet. You know, sort of uh, people who follow macrobiotics are not going to get adequate nutrients and their kids are going to run into all these kinds of problems and that kind of thing. Um, and so that's been their main perspective, primarily to prevent people from doing anything with macrobiotics. That's been one perspective. Another perspective has been, well, these, this community of people uh, who are following macrobiotics or these ideas, this dietary pattern, is, is, is interesting and unique, and it's also a way, uh, it's an expression of many of the things that we think might be beneficial in terms of preventing heart disease or cancer or whatever. And maybe if we study these people, then maybe we can get some idea of whether diet really can make a difference. And so there have been a few studies that have been done over the years looking at sort of like cholesterol profiles, blood pressure profiles, uh, uh, things related to possibly breast cancer risk, uh, and, um, and a number of other things like that, trying to document what macrobiotic people blood profiles are like, for example, compared with other people. And, and those studies have helped to inform the general idea that diet does make a difference and that it really can be beneficial. So sort of in conjunction with that, there's been an evolution in the way of the way that people, not in macrobiotics, but medical researchers, think about macrobiotics. <laughs> and basically, it, it used to be sort of this negative thing. Now it's among many circles it's uh, accepted as maybe something that's it's extreme but can be helpful uh, it's really sort of a beneficial thing or it's not so much this crazy diet that used to be thought of as many of the things that macrobiotics teaches uh, that there's growing support for I don't know if we need to wait for these cards <laughs> but there's a growing support for in terms of medical evidence uh, and so, so it's not necessarily something that people need to be afraid of as, you know, in terms of, well, is it really super risky or whatever. I think there also needs to be at the same time uh, good communication with your healthcare provider, your physician or whatever. Um, oftentimes they will be critical of macrobiotics without necessarily knowing what it's about. But I think that uh, if, as long as there's good communication, uh, then I think that in the long run, it'll be for the better for the person uh, in particular. And uh, I think that, you know, that 
macrobiotics does have a lot to offer. It may not be completely as the total answer for everybody, um, but it is a you know very large perspective on lifestyle and life and what one can do.